If your 3D printer's got a case of the wiggles, and not just in the x-axis, it can be in basically any of them, it might be time to do some maintenance on those V-wheels, and that includes tightening them up. You're going to need an 11 millimeter wrench and to watch this video. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to fixing your 3D printer. I understand that it's not always that straightforward to get your 3D printer up and running, but hopefully these videos do help. And if they do, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. We're gonna be talking all about V-wheels. And V-wheels are one of the easiest things to overlook and one of the easiest things to fix on your 3D printer, assuming it does have V-wheels. If it does have V-wheels, you'll notice wheels that have a V in them. I know, crazy talk, but it's true. A lot of the more affordable 3D printers come with V-wheels because they are cheaper than linear rods and bearings to go onto it. And it's common to see companies utilize these because they last a long time, they're relatively easy to service, and they don't wear as rough as bearings do when bearings actually start to wear. And that wearing occurs because of lack of maintenance. We'll be doing a video all about maintaining your printers with ball bearings very soon. So make sure you stay tuned if that's something that you wanna see. But you're here for V-Wheels, so let's jump right into it. You're going to need an 11 millimeter wrench. Open-ended is the best. Sometimes the printers come with them. I just prefer to have one on hand. Brand does not matter. If you wanna go down to Harbor Freight and pick up a set of metric wrenches, you can. It's fine, and they're guaranteed forever. So, you know, can't hate that. You're going to find the V wheels on your printer. In this Ender 3 V2, we've got one over here, one over here, one on the bottom of the X axis, and then two on the bottom of the bed. For the purposes of this video, I have loosened these like crazy. This, this is not normal. You should not see this. And the V wheel should not spin freely. You want the V wheel to be relatively tight on the rail, but this one is a bit more feeling. So while I'm tightening it, let's talk about it. Tighten the V wheel. You want to just grab it and turn it. Now, technically it does not matter which direction you turn it because these are on eccentric nuts and eccentric nuts are basically an offset bolt so that as you turn it, it gets either closer or further away from the object. This one's pretty easy. So it doesn't matter which way you go, but hey, righty tighty lefty loosey. And you tighten it until the system is relatively strong. So what we wanna see is that the wheel still moves relatively easily, but doesn't bind, still a little too tight. And you'll see, it doesn't take a lot to change it. What we wanna do is we wanna have a lot of force to get it to spin on its own, but not too much. It is a bit of feel, so I apologize, but you can get it relatively close and be okay. This one is all tightened up and we can check on your other two wheels. If the other two wheels while you're holding this wheel can turn easily, it is way too loose. Same thing with the V-wheel, hold the axis, try to turn the V-wheel. Does the V-wheel turn easily? No? Great, you're good. If you can't turn it at all, it's probably too tight. Now, too tight is technically better than too loose. What will happen on some machines, you can actually waller out this hole and create a bit of a problem. It's okay though, because it probably won't happen to you. What will happen is that the V-wheel itself will wear excessively, which can kind of suck because they're not the easiest things to replace and they're not all that cheap either. Looking at the x-axis, this one is a lot easier to see the wiggle on it. For the x-axis, it is much of the same. We've got the eccentric nut under here and you'll notice on top of it, it's smooth. They're just spacers, basically. So there's nothing to adjust on top. But we can see this wheel just moves completely freely without any issues and it actually has a fair bit of wear on it. Now, it's not something that I'm going to worry about too much right now. It's just a matter of getting this thing nice and tight. And you can see, even though I'm going the other direction here, we can still easily adjust this V-wheel. Now, the X-axis is a little bit harder because you will obviously need two hands for it. And a lot of times it's good to just let it hit an end stop and then try to move the wheels. I'm reasonably happy with this right now. Yeah, that's pretty tight. I like the x-axis to be a little bit tighter than some of the others. The reason for that is that is where a lot of the action happens. If you have a little bit of a loose z-axis, like right now, the z-axis over here, totally loose. You really won't notice it too much. You might notice some z-wobble, but it won't be that bad. You saw in the beginning how easy it was to move this carriage, and hell, you saw how easy it was to move this. Now, this x-axis is the definition of not going anywhere. On the other side of the z-axis, same deal. We just wanna go ahead and adjust it, 
till it gets nice and tight on there. So far, that's still pretty loose. Now, unfortunately, there is no torque value that I recommend, and we do recommend that you do this with your printer on. If you do it when your printer is off, you can actually backfeed your stepper motor drivers with the DC current from the stepper motors, and that can actually cause them to fry. So be careful about that stuff. We don't want that to happen to you. If it is too tight, just go the other direction, and it will loosen itself up relatively easily. And keep going until you're happy the way that it feels. So I went too far, now it's free spinning again. So I know it's somewhere in between. It is a bit of the Goldilocks, right? Too much or not good enough. And the bed is much of the same. The nice thing about V-Wheels is that, well, they're easily disposable, easy to handle, and honestly, they're much quieter. Those of you that have used printers like Ender 3 clones or the Neptune 3 Pro, Max, or the Plus, all kind of know that while V-Wheels sometimes can require extra maintenance and do tend to wear much faster than ball bearings would on a linear rail, they are considerably quieter. I can move the axis on this printer with little to no noise. With something like a ball bearing motion system, you're going to hear that move. Now there are still bearings on this system. You can actually see them pretty easily on the V-wheels themselves. And that means you get all the benefits of the ball bearings without any of the extra noise because these ones are designed to roll as you see them do here. Now you also wanna make sure that the channels that the V-wheels move in are relatively clean. You wanna make sure there's no dust, dirt, grime, debris, whatever it might be. And especially you wanna make sure to take all little bits of 3D printing schmoo out of there. Adding anything for these wheels to go over will cause them to wear faster than it would if it wasn't there. For the ender, to do the bed side, you'll tilt the printer on its side. On the bottom side of the ender, we can see that we have one eccentric nut here and another one there. Be aware with any printers that don't have auto bed living or have bed springs. The movement that you might feel in your bed is probably from your springs and not from your V-wheels, but it's good to check just to be safe. These are pretty good. I don't have to do too much to them. I'm gonna snug them up ever so slightly because that's just good practice. There we go. It doesn't take much to get your machine running well. And with a little bit of tools, assuming it didn't come with it, enders do, or at least this one did. It does come with the right wrenches. I don't particularly like them. I much prefer to use my own, but a couple of bucks to get the right tools and a couple of minutes of your time can keep your 3D printer running better. There is no guarantee that adjusting your V-wheels is going to solve your problem unless it is very obviously a V-wheel problem. Don't forget that 3D printing is not as much of a science as any of us would like it to be. With a small hand tool, you are able to do a lot of the work. That would be difficult to do otherwise, but that does not mean it's going to work perfectly. You might also want to make sure that your bed is clean, that you have your first layer set well, whether that's with a leveling probe or with something like the Filament Friday Bed Leveler, which we reviewed in a recent video. We'll card to it so you guys can take a look. And of course, Z Offset, which is something, again, we've covered. We'll card to that one as well. We're going to have a whole series here about maintenance, so make sure you click those end cards to check out the rest of these maintenance videos, because there's a lot going on. And don't forget, we have an entire series called Print Fix Friday, where if you are having print failures and some of these things just aren't working, you can submit your fails to us by tagging us on all the social media, sliding into those DMs, or emailing us, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com. That will help us better help you get your machines running in tip-top shape. V-wheels are not always the answer, and we know that, but it's one step into getting your printer running and firing on all cylinders. Comment below and let me know, are you a fan of V-wheels or are you a fan of linear rails? Let me know, I'd be curious to know. Personally, I'm a linear rail fanboy, but that's just because they're much easier to maintain over long stretch periods of time. They're harder right in the beginning, but as soon as you get them oiled and lubricated properly, life will be good or a good quality grease. All depends on your particular libation. That's all I have for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. And you can see, even though I'm going the other direction here. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. And a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters whose names are scrolling right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Thank you all for what you do to make this channel possible. And we just passed 9,000 subscribers, so it's over 9,000!
it had to be done. It had to be done. You know it had to be done. I know it had to be done. We all know it had to be done. But if you want to support us, you can do so by joining Patreon and YouTube channel members. Links in that description down below. Right below me will be the printer maintenance series designed especially for beginners. So you could look at how to fix your printers if you are having those failures. And right next to that will be the entire Print Fix Friday series. Remember, you can always submit your fails to us and we'll take a look at them and help you out. I'll see you guys down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.